It's July 25th, 2021. I'm Todd Dunn, and today I'm uh, continuing with a project I started some time ago, and that is, oh, wait a second, have to deal with Miss Kitty. She's my assistant. She helps me with things like this. This is Gracie Grafer. Okay, Gracie, can I get on with my project? Hmm? Good girl. Okay. So anyway, what I'm doing is building a uh, fold down table for the port side in the upper cabin aboard my 1936 wooden powerboat Tortuga. And this is a mahogany table. And what I've done so far is laminate the table up, cut it to size, and uh, and started varnishing it. Now basically what I have here is uh, mahogany that's been biscuited and edge glued together with uh, epoxy. And I'm putting build coats of varnish on it right now. And currently I have three coats of varnish on it. And I'm using Captain's uh, varnish, which is an okay varnish. It's not the best varnish for build coats because it's very thin. But uh, there was a two for one sale on it this spring at the chandlery that I use. And so, you know, I couldn't resist. I bought it anyway, even though I would have preferred the Epiphanis uh, gloss varnish. But this was less than half the cost, so it's adequate. It does the job. So let's take a look at the project. Here is the project itself. It is, as I said, mahogany uh, edge glued together, three coats of varnish. And what I'm going to do now is just sand it out fairly thoroughly uh, with 220 grit paper on the random orbital sander. So let's get going. Okay, there's the surface. Uh, mahogany is very porous wood and it usually takes six to eight coats of varnish to get a good fill on it, which is why you can see there's still some unevenness after only three coats. Now I am planning to go to, with eight coats of varnish on this. I'm gonna go seven build coats of Captain's. If I was using Epiphanis, I could probably get away with five, but seven build coats of Captain's to get the grain of the wood completely filled with varnish and then I will put a satin finish on this to match what I have aboard the boat and this wood is stained so I wanted to be a little careful when I sanded it and not get too aggressive because I don't want to break through the varnish and cut through the stain because if that happens I have to sand the whole thing back to bare wood and start over which I do not want to do so I still have to sand the edges. I'm gonna hand sand them because there's too much of a chance with the random orbital that I will break through. So let me do that. Okay, just sand the edge lightly here with, again, with 220. And I'm not being aggressive on this edge because as I said, I do not want to break through the varnish and the stain. And as I get more varnish built up, I may switch to using a Scotch-Brite pad for some of the, uh, for the final build coat. Yeah, or I may, when I get several more coats on here, 
give it a nice aggressive sand with the random orbital when I know I have got enough varnish I'm not going to break through. So I'm just going to wipe off most of the dust here with a paper towel and then we will go over it with the tack cloth and I can see my random orbital left some marks. I'm going to have to go over this quickly and hand sand it a little bit. One of the risks you have with a random orbital sander. So, sand with the grain. That'll get rid of the random orbital sanding marks. Because I do not want to varnish over visible scratches across the grain. Because those scratches will then be more or less a permanent feature of the surface. Now I could block sand this, but uh, there really isn't any reason to at this point. Because these are just build coats. I just don't want visible cross grain scratch. This is quick, quick, quick sand here by hand with the grain. Okay, that got rid of most of that. So we can wipe this down again. Then go over it with the tack cloth. Now I am not, at this point, being meticulous about getting all the dust off because, as I said, this is just a build coat and it will get an aggressive sanding later. And if there are a couple flaws in it, well, you know, it won't matter that much at this level as long as there are no visible cross-grain scratches. Okay, that's pretty good in terms of getting my surface ready for the tack cloth. Tack cloth is just to get the bulk of the remaining dust off which it does a good job of. Normally I do this inside, but I'm working outside today for reasons of filming, in that I really don't have very good light for filming in my workshop. And uh, so I'm better off just doing a quick film out here even if I do have to carry it inside. Okay, that is tack cloth. And I am ready at this point to begin a varnish application. And so that I don't end up with dust falling off my hand onto it, although I'm not being super meticulous about the dust, I uh, you know, don't want really bad lumps of dust on the surface. So, we'll open the varnish up. And as usual, again, since these are build coats, I am not going to strain the varnish. And I'm actually going to work right out of the can which of course is a no-no. Right now I'm using a three inch foam brush. Usually use two inches, but the Chandrily was out of them. There are a lot of things that stores are out of right now. So we'll get a little of that and we'll just put varnish on here. First step is just to get some varnish on. I'm gonna work both ways with the grain and across the grain. And then once I get varnish on, we'll brush it out with the grain. This guarantees that I'll fill my grain with varnish. And again, since this is a build coat, I'm not making a real effort to get a uniform film. Uh, I mean, I'll go for reasonably uniform, but I'm not spending a lot of time 
trying to get my varnish film really uniform as I would for a finish coat. I'm just going to fill the grain and get everything done up. And as usual, when you're varnishing, the actual varnish application goes very quickly. I'll spend significantly less time putting varnish on this piece than I will actually varnishing it. I'm a little thin there. I can feel the brush dragging. So I'll just put a little more varnish in here so that it won't do that. Okay. Now we'll run around the outside edge. Like this. Now this back edge here is going to be attached to the bulkhead that this is going to mount on with a piano hinge. So I'm just varnishing it for completeness more than anything else. This edge, however, will be visible, so try to make it a little bit better finish. And now I just have to get the other side. over this okay that's it a quick build coat it's not perfect by any means I would never do a finish coat outside like this on a sunny on a warm breezy day because the chance of getting a having it uh, dry unevenly and give me and lose my wet edge uh, it would be virtually a hundred percent and uh, also uh, I would get a very uneven coat. Just looking at this, I can see it's pretty uneven. The varnish is drying so fast that it's not gonna flow out. But as I said, this is a build coat. It's gonna get sanded fairly aggressively before the next coat. This is coat number four, and I'm probably gonna end up with oh, six or seven coats of gloss varnish before I switch over to the uh, matte finish varnish or satin varnish or depending on the brand you use some people call it rubbed effect varnish and the reason I'm doing my build coats with gloss is that if the rubbed effect satin matte finish varnish has an agent in it to give it that matte finish if you build up with that it will make the grain very hazy and you won't really be able to see the grain of the wood very well. So building it up with the more, much more transparent gloss varnish may, retains wood grain in your piece and uh, you only use the matte satin whatever finish for the last coat to uh, give you the final product. Okay, that's it. Quick little build coat varnishing tutorial. Now this project should be finished and ready to go on the boat in, oh, two or three weeks. But I probably won't actually install it until the end of the summer because my wife does not like the smell of fresh varnish and fresh varnish to her means any time this year. <laughs> so I will let this uh, cure out probably until the end of the summer before I install it on a boat after the boat is hauled and then it can cure out for the rest of the winter and uh, she won't uh, be bothered by it in the spring. Okay, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Give me a thumbs up if you did and if you haven't, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you will get 
notifications of when my next exciting boat project is ready for you to watch. Thanks again for watching.